guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my long-awaited, can I say long-awaited if I'm pretty sure the only one who's been waiting for it is me? We're gonna go with it, we're gonna say that anyway. Today is my long-awaited review of Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, I have been reading this book since December and today is April 10th to be specific. Uh, I did finally finish this, I think in March is when I made the most progress in this, so we're gonna say March. Um, and I really ended up enjoying it, regardless of the fact that it took me almost three full months. If my tripod shakes, it's because my cat has decided she needs to rub her face all over it, so I apologize. So to those of you who don't know, Oathbringer is the third book in the Stormlight Archive series by Brandon Sanderson. This is his biggest and most comprehensive work in the entire Cosmere. Each book in this series is over a thousand pages. I think Oathbringer came in at around 1200 if I'm not mistaken. I think that Way of Kings was a little over a thousand, and Words of Radiance was somewhere around like the 1100 realm. They're large. They're large and they have very thin pages and it takes a while to get through them. Oathbringer by far took me the furthest to get through because it's not that I wasn't interested. Um, it's mostly that a lot of the things that they did throughout the first half of the book I kind of cared less about and I can't really go into specifics as this is a non-spoilery review but I did just want to go over some of the things that I did and did not like. So Oathbringer is, like I said, the third book in the Stormlight Archive, and it is very much Dalinar's book. So whereas The Way of Kings followed Kaladin's story, the flashbacks were all about Kaladin's past, and Words of Radiance was Shallan's story, and the flashbacks told you more about Shallan's past, Oathbringer is all about Dalinar. And while I enjoyed Dalinar in the previous books, and I really do love him as a character, don't get me wrong, he's he's definitely one of my favorite people in this world, I don't think that I cared as much about his past, um, and seeing, honestly, just, like, the terrible things that he did, and I understand why, and it is explained a little bit why, but his, his just, his flashbacks were so hard for me to get to. I, I kind of dreaded every single time I came to one. But it is a Stormlight Archive book. And regardless of all of that, regardless of the fact that it took me three months to read it, and it doesn't change the fact that I loved this book, and in the end I ended up giving it five stars. So I've been talking for almost five straight minutes now, and I honestly haven't really said anything about what this book is about, and I can't really speak to what Oathbringer specifically is about without spoiling the events of the previous two books. So I guess I will just say that in the Stormlight Archives, you follow a cast of characters that are living in the world of Roshar, and you see them in the midst of a long war between the Alethi and the Parshendi. Uh, there are other countries involved as well, uh, but mostly it is just Alethkar and the Parshendi warring against each other because of the assassination of the Alethi king. And I don't really know how much more I can say without spoiling it, but you do follow Adolin and Shallan and Dalinar and Kaladin and occasionally a couple of other cast of character point of views um, as they navigate this and they learn about a group of mythical heroes from long in their country's past or their world's past that they thought had long died off and given up on protecting them and their kingdom but are starting to come back. Let's see. I think that that's the most that I can say summary wise as far as what this is about. If you have not read any of the Stormlight Archives and you love epic fantasy, I do highly recommend that you check it out. But as far as Oathbringer goes specifically, this is getting heavy, I'm going to switch hands. As far as Oathbringer goes, without blinding you hopefully, as far as Oathbringer goes specifically, I did want to talk about a couple of the things that I liked and didn't like without spoiling you for any of the specific events of this book. The thing that I loved about Words of Radiance was that all of the characters that I loved so much in The Way of Kings separately came together into the story in Words of Radiance and it was everything. I lived for all of those interactions, I lived for all of it, I loved for relationships being built and trust being built and all of that. Um, and in Oathbringer it was still there but they were separated again for I honestly feel like the first half of the book. Not all of them, but certain characters that I love were separated for the first half of the book. And it was just hard for me to get sucked into that storyline because I, I spent honestly several hundred pages just being like, okay can you go back to everybody else now because that's where I want you to be? Which is not how the book works, obviously. Once again, when you get to the end of this, Brandon Sanderson comes through with his Sanderlanch 
and it was just a cascade of all of the crazy events happening. I was just wandering around the house with this book in my hands because I couldn't put it down for the last couple of hundred pages. That's just how all of his books are without fail. I loved all of the revelations that you make in this world as you keep reading in the series. I love all of the characters that you learn about. I love how their motivations are described and changed and it's just... The Stormlight Archives has definitely become one of my favorite series, especially in the Cosmere. I know that a lot of people give Mistborn a lot of love, but I really think that in all honesty I've been enjoying my read of the Stormlight Archives more than I enjoyed my read of Mistborn. I just love the characters more. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it when it ends, but that's just that's where we're at right now. As far as the relationship goes that developed in Words of Radiance and continued on into Oathbringer, I know that it's a little bit controversial, but honestly, I'm all for it. I love both of those characters. I know that not everybody loves the male counterpart of that relationship, but I do. I think that he's a cinnamon roll and I just want to give him a big old hug. So the ending of this made me extremely happy and I cannot wait to move on to Rhythm of War, which I am a little bit nervous about because I did hear that there was a time jump between Oathbringer and Rhythm of War, and the way that this ended, there were just some things that still had not quite come to a head that I really wanted to know more about. I don't know the meaning of the time jump, I don't know what characters you follow, but I am interested and I am excited, and I do still also have to read Dawn Shard in, in between that, so... My Cosmere read-along is still ongoing, Oathbringer is definitely not the end of it, and I will have to keep you guys updated as I continue on with the series. So I did end up giving Oathbringer a full 5 out of 5 stars, I just really loved everything about it, except, I mean, I know I said it, the beginning wasn't great, but like, looking back on my experience, it's definitely not worth anything less than a 5 stars to me. I just, like I said, I loved everything about it, I loved the characters, I loved the world building, I loved the magic system, I just love the entire Cosmere as a whole and the Stormlight Archives is really no different for me. You're just going to have to come and listen to me ramble through my reviews because I, I don't know how to put into words how much I love these books. So yeah, Oathbringer got a full 5 out of 5 stars from me and I don't see Rhythm of War or Dawn Shard really being any differently. But anyway, that is it for my review of Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. I hope you guys liked this video and that's it for me today guys, so I will talk to you in my next one. Bye!